Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, 2021.2 is out and I'm gonna be covering the new feature at the very top of the page about Ask Data. Now, when you start to unpick Ask Data in this release, there's actually a couple of things that are sort of worth breaking out into separate videos. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this one. The thing I'm gonna to touch on today is this specific thing here called Ask Data Lenses. Now, Ask Data Lenses have been added to essentially make it easier for viewers to engage with Ask Data content. Essentially, the problem that you used to have before is as an editor or creator, um, you'd publish up a data source to Ask Data, but sometimes some data sources just have so many fields. And so you had to do a lot of your work on desktop before you publish the data source up uh, to make that work. Now, the problem then is that your published data source couldn't be used for anything else. So you ended up with this sort of really weird economy of data sources. And so what they've done, is they've essentially separated those two things out. You can go ahead and publish your full data source with all the fields that you want. And then you do something called creating a lens, which basically allows you to narrow in on the questions that a viewer might ask of that data source into just a few fields with some synonyms and some obviously, you know, some prep done in advance to make it easier for the user, even down to things like recommended chart types. So in this video, I'm going to show you how that works. And in other videos, I'll obviously talk about uh, ask data, but if you're sort of really keen on ask data, I've already made lots of videos about how it works and uh, there's obviously some nuance to that some of it has been improved and updated over time so again we'll cover that in future videos but today we're just going to be creating an ask data lens and so if you're a creator this is essentially a video for you i'm going to go right from the beginning i'm going to create a data source in desktop publish it up and then we're going to go from there okay let's get stuck in okay so i'm obviously on the tableau homepage. i'm just going to uh, switch over to tableau i am actually indeed running i need to make sure i'm running the right version of tableau here so let's go and make sure yes there you go we got 2021.2. Now, uh, I'm just going to connect to Superstore. I'm going to connect to the American one, which is the second data source here. Sometimes you have one, sometimes you have two, but essentially I'm going to create to uh, connect to this one because it's a little bit simpler. Okay. Now, what I want to do is before I publish this data source up to my Tableau online or Tableau server, I just want to do some work to, to create some fields that people, you know, would commonly need. So I'm going to create two lenses and these think of these as two perspectives. I'm going to create a profitability perspective and a shipping perspective so we can sort of make it easy. So I need to do the pre-work to make sure that those fields and uh, calculations are already done and embedded in the published data source before I publish it up. So um, we've already got a profit ratio calculation, but what I don't see, if I go to um, ship date, we've got the ship date and we've got the order date. And so what I'd like to do is create a new metric, which is essentially just a date difference between those two. So let's go ahead and create a calculated field. I'll just bring the dates in. Oh, I've got my uh, little emoji keyboard that's fired up here in the globe key. So let's go and um, just create date here. And oh, it doesn't, doesn't want to know about uh, that. So let's just, let's type in order date and let's type in ship date. Okay, so we've got those two in. Now I'm just trying to think which is the best way to do this. I think it's normally a good idea to do uh, that this way around. Uh, and so I'm not done here yet. I've just bring in the field so that I know what I need to do. And if I didn't, then just type date diff um, here, you'll see that this is the function that comes up and it shows you how it works. Date diff, the part, start date, end date, start of the week. So essentially what I can do is I can just put here uh, in days and I can just say uh, start date, which is the ship date and end date. Is that really the right way around? Um, I'll, I'll go along with it. So what I'll do is I'll grab this. Um, I'll grab this and put this here. Um, I never really know. I always just calculate the answer and then uh, figure things out. So days to ship. And what we can do is we can actually grab an order and check this and make sure this works. So let's just create that. It should be a numerical field, which is correct. And let's just bra grab an order ID and we can add all of them. This is totally fine on my machine. So I'm just gonna bring in the order date. Let's just bring in the exact order date. And uh, that will take a bit of time. I'm obviously not building a very optimized view here. And um, this is gonna compute that a little bit. And then I'm gonna drag the ship date. I'm gonna, I, actually I could have just gone for a discrete date to be honest. I didn't need the exact date. And um, it's being really sort of, I was being really uh, not smart in that instance. So. You can tell I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> so let's uh, let's just wait for this to load. Okay, there we go. So let's um, let's just choose day in this case. And what we'll do is we'll keep that discrete in both instances. I could have just right click, dragged this out, and then chosen the exact date. I don't know why I didn't didn't do that. Sometimes you have these habits, and they they kind of stick with you, and um, you end up just being. 
um, a little bit slow. And also I'm doing this to 5,000 marks. So it's trying to draw viz every single time. So you know what, what I'm gonna do? I'm going to be smarter and just keep only the first three orders. That will make everything a lot, lot um, smoother. And we can just go in here and do this. So we can see the um, the order date now. What I should really do is do this, then I can better see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, so we've got the two dates. And if I just bring days to ship as a number, you can see that this is all negative and it's because of the way we've done it. We've done the start date minus the end date, which obviously gives you a negative number. Um, so if we just switch these around, um, so if you actually, um, if we actually do this, let's do this. So you can see the order in which I'm doing the math. So that's the start date and that's the uh, day it shipped. So it says minus six because that minus that is is is, le is, is six less. So um, let's just go in here and just switch these around so we don't have to. The other thing we could do is we could just put a minus in front of this. We don't have to switch those around. I could be lazy and do that. And because of maths, you know, amazing things happen. So, um, seven to six, that's six days. So now we have that calculation there. That's really, really good to go. And I have a profit number, I have days to ship. And the key thing to understand is obviously, um, you know, we need to be able to make sure that everything is set up. The other thing I'd love to know is um, the average order size. So for this one, I'm actually gonna use an LOD. Um, if you haven't used um, an LOD or you're not sure what they are, I've actually done a series on uh, LODs. Go check it out. I'll put a link in the description or pop up on the screen um, for this for you to see. So anyway, for this one, we're gonna do fix the order ID. Um, I would love to know the average uh, sales. Um, for this one, essentially, I want to just know the average value of items in the order. And that gives me sort of an inclination about how big the order is, okay? So, um, or I could just do, I could just do um, the size of the order, actually. That's a much better proxy. Let's just do sum of uh, sales in that case. So that just tells me the size of the order and there we go. So size of the order as a LOD um, and we hit apply. And now we've got those two fills. So size of order, days to ship. We've got profit to, uh, profit ratio and profitability also. You could call it that as well. And now we're pretty much good to go. I'm not going to do much more. I'm going to go ahead and publish this to server. So I'm actually already connected to the Tableau Online instance that I use for demos. You'll see that it just pops up here. Uh, the way you know that, for example, is if you go up to the server and you just uh, select this little uh, little arrow here. So just go to server there at the top and then you'll see that it says you're signed in and it even tells you which server you're signed into. If you're signed into the wrong site, then you're also able to go in and change that just by going to the arrow section that's uh, up there. So anyway, we're back here in Tableau and I'm going to publish this to the 2021.2 folder. Uh, I'm going to call this sample superstore um, data source. Okay. And um, this, is, this is a prerequisite of lenses. You can't create a lens from a data source that's embedded inside of a workbook. It's really, really important to be aware of, okay? So um, just call this test uh, lens data source, okay? Uh, data source, great, great, great. Everything looks good. So now we, when we publish that, this is gonna send up this data source up to Tableau online in this case, and we're pretty, pretty much gonna be ready to go. So now that we're here, we're ready for the next step in terms of creating this lens. Now. We can obviously schedule an extract here. We don't need to do that. If you're connecting to a database, you might be able to do that and you know do whatever you need to do. Now, previously with Ask Data, this was actually the place you started. So Ask Data just sort of dropped you hot into all of these fields and you could do some customizations, but even so, it kind of meant that you had to publish separate data sources for Ask Data compared to the other data sources. So um, what you can now do, if I just go over here, if you just see where it says new, if I go to this drop down, you'll see that I now have a new option here, which is the ability to create a lens. Now, this is really interesting because it's like a perspective. It's like a window into your data. And what you're doing is you're, you're creating these sort of perspectives in these windows so people can have very focused set of questions. And actually it also makes it easier for people to sort of contextualize the kind of topic they have in mind when you create a lens and these lenses can be saved and they're just like any other asset in Tableau so permissions and everything work alongside them and um, yeah they're just, they're just a nice sort of way of 
focusing people's attention. I think that's always something that's lacked. You've just had a world of data sources and a world of workbooks, but it's always been hard to really narrow in on a specific sort of a problem you know we build dashboards sometimes for that but sometimes you don't need a dashboard you just need like a sort of a filter on a, on, on a, on a set of rows and um, lenses aren't that but you'll see what I, you see what you can do with them in a second so I'm going to go ahead and create a lens in this case I'm going to call this um, uh, 2020 I can't type 2021 hyphen two lens example and actually, no, what I'm not, I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call this um, 2021.2 um, shipping uh, lens. Okay, let's just call this shipping lens. And now that we've done that, we're going to put that in this folder and I say um, for shipping inquiries. Okay, great. And I'm going to publish the lens now. Um, when you publish this lens, it's obviously going to go and uh, send you off to a page. It's almost like you've published a workbook and now here we have our shipping lens. And notice that it's different to our data because you have this sort of icon and this icon is sort of consistent across all of Tableau. OK, so um, you can see that this is now a new asset type that you can work with now. Now that I'm in my lens, um, I can do a bunch of different things. I can obviously minimize and close this window. You see the fields that we sort of saw before. You can obviously go in here and start um, typing questions. So average um, duration to ship. And um, you'll see that it guesses that I'm talking about the days to ship um, a, a number. And so if I just uh, do that and then hit enter, um, it will obviously think about it and go off and uh, hopefully build a, a visualization or return a number. And you see there the average days to ship is 3.958. Now, what I've just done there was basically the old experience with Ask Data. I just used that type to question. I didn't look for a lens. I haven't even customized anything here. So let's go ahead and actually I'm going to go back to my lens. And we're not going to use this just yet, but you can start to see sort of some of the benefit here. So now, now we have our lens. You can see that it has all the same capabilities. So you can move them, you can manage their permissions. And when you go into the permissions, you've got all the same capability that you used to have uh, with permissions in Tableau. Now, when you go to each individual field, you can start to be a little bit more specific. Okay, So for example, um, you can see here that I have customer names and I can just uh, say this another synonym for this could be a customer. And I can click like that and I can go in here and you see location here as obviously a hierarchy and it tells you what it is and um, you can go in and see the location that's kind of important for shipping the order date the order id um, the product i don't need to know much about the profitability if i'm honest so what i could decide to do in this lens is uh, sort of hide this particular field so what i'm going to go and do is click on this data field and you'll see that i get this uh ability to select fields. Now, there's a little bit of sort of weirdness with the tablet documentation. It calls it fields here, uh, but there it says data. So it's it's sort of not obvious that that's where you go. You might think you're going to edit the data, but actually it should be fields. I think this is probably just a hangover or bug or something that hasn't been sort of cleaned up. And this is actually a modal window, so you can move it around, do whatever you want. And now you can actually choose what you want to focus in on. I don't need anything to do with profitability in this particular um, data source. I've obviously got the ship date and the ship mode. Um, I don't need anything about discount, profit. I would like to know the quantity. I would like to let, know the sales and says, uh, size of order. And then I need to know whether the, I don't really need to know where the items returned because that's for the returns department, okay? I don't need to know about uh, profit ratio or the top customers by profit. Now, when I do that and I submit, you'll notice that my list on the left hand side is now a lot more narrow. I don't have anything to do with profit and that's ready to go. And now I can start using this uh, to sort of gain uh, some sort of insight. Now, as more people use this, as more people ask questions, you will see that you have um, recommended visualizations. And these are sort of, they're semi-smart. So uh, the most obvious ones appear once our status analyze your data, you can obviously go in and it will change those. Um, you've obviously got some date and time questions. You've got some filters here and you can essentially create these and edit these as you like. So for example, if I want to maybe change the this type. So let's say I want to get rid of pie charts because I don't like pie charts. So I can go ahead and remove that and you'll see that that sort of disappears straight away. If I go ahead and collapse that, that's all fine. If I click on this edit title, you can obviously change this sort of group of um, recommendation types. Um, this is sort of just sort of, um, it's just a way of nicely grouping uh, the questions. They're not, they're sort of, 
although Tableau is giving you a suggestion that these are filtered, these are date and time, you could actually rename these groups and put your own set of questions sort of into these areas. Now, the way this actually works is when Ash Data um, is used by someone and someone actually clicks on it, it's like they validated that that's a valid question to ask. And then the visualization that's sort of captured there is sort of sort of captured with that. Now, the list of visualization that, that comes from, I'll show you where that is. So let's just say, let's just go back to our average uh, days to ship uh, question and let's just hit that. And um, if we go and just hit submit on this particular lens, another thing you'll notice when I do that is um, now the context of where I started my question is actually the shipping lens. So in terms of just browsing, uh, it also makes it a lot easier. Notice my fields are still the same reduced set of fields, just focus on shipping. Now the list of visualizations you can choose from depend on what you build. So you can see here that I've asked a very basic uh, sort of question here. So you get bar chart, text table, and histogram. However, if I was to say um, uh, average uh, days to ship by location, Okay, uh, and I can obviously add some context to this because you'll see that it suggests as a map because it thinks locations and maps that sort of go together. So let's do that and uh, let's hit that uh, enter. Now, your search can't be applied to this visualization because of course it's in this sort of particular context. So let's just clear everything. Let's try this again. Average days to ship by city. I think that's a valid question you would ask and this time it's worked. I think the problem was is that I was trying to do it having already asked the question. I needed to clear it first. So maybe that wasn't as obvious to me, but you can see here that it's drawn a map. And obviously when I go to do the drop down now, you can see the thing I was trying to show you a few minutes ago is that um, this question's now up to date and you can see the chart types have, have sort of popped up. So if I then choose a chart type here, let's say, um, a heat map doesn't really make sense in this context. A map is really the best one. Um, if I do a tree map, it's going to, they're basically all going to be generally the same because the size of the box rep represents the average days to ships. So that's not really that interesting. But what I'll do is I'll click a few of these anyway, so you can sort of see the output. Okay, and then what we're going to do is actually clear all of this and go back to our shipping lens. And when we go back to our shipping lens, uh, essentially what's happened is I've given Tableau some information so it knows, okay, someone's asked some questions here and they've asked for these specific chart types. So you can start to see that if I go to the viz types, you can see um, it's all, it keeps it keeps defaulting to some, uh, but you can see that it's obviously starting to look at the questions I'm asking and it's sort of bringing those in, which is quite nice. So that's essentially a lens in a nutshell. It's very, very simple. Now, the great thing is you can create multiple lenses. So uh, what I can do is I can go back to my data source and I can go ahead and create another lens. And this time I'm gonna call this 2021-2 um, um, profitability uh, lens, okay? and um, I go ahead and publish that lens. And now that it's published, you sort of have to create the lens before you can do stuff with it, right? So now that you've created the lens, you've now sort of jumped into your little sort of spot of focus, uh, go ahead and hit the pencil icon. Um, if you're wondering where that was, it was just, uh, oh, I brought the wrong thing in there. Let's uh, grab the arrow and just point at that there. So you can see that there it is. And now what I can do, is I'm obviously still interested in things like location, the order. I might be more interested in the customer, but I definitely don't need the shipping mode and uh, the shipping date because uh, that's sort of not really relevant for me. The discount, profitability, quantity, and size of order are all useful, and I don't need to know whether it's returned or not. So let's just hit submit. And now you'll see that my list updates, I've now got no information there about shipping and it's all being driven off the one data source. So if I go back to my 2021.2 folder, you'll see that I have my data source. I have uh, two lenses, profitability lens and shipping lens, and you're now ready to go, okay? So that's a very simple video on how to create the lenses. Now, what I've actually been having over here on the right hand, left hand side of my screen, sorry. Actually, you're, you're probably right hand side. So um, if I actually open this tab, I have a nice guide. I'll put this in the description below about creating lenses, everything you can do, everything you can create. And I think it's a really good place to go. And then the next video I'm about to record now, which is uh, about our data and adding that lens to a dashboard. 
The really important thing, I can't stress this enough, is that you can't use this lens feature on a data source that's embedded inside of a workbook. So if you want to use AS data lens to a dashboard, you have to start with a published data source in your workbook in the first place. You can't just connect to a data source and only have that embedded in the workbook. It has to come from Tableau server. And that is a big sort of workflow change. So that's just something to be aware of and make sure that you sort of um, get into. So um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop this video here. And in the next one, I'll talk about adding an Ask Data uh, window into your dashboard so you can obviously let viewers and everyone else use this amazing feature because in this release, uh, viewers now have access to it. I'll catch you in the next one.